Hello, fellow stampers. This is Yana Smakula for My Favorite Things. Welcome back for another video tutorial. In this video, I have a mini slimline card to share featuring the Wild Poppies stamp set and coordinating dies. I love poppies and I've seen many in the wild when I was growing up, but I would only see them in red. And so that gave me the misconception that these flowers only come in the color red. But poppies actually come in a variety of colors from white to purple. I wanted to create a very soft, pastel-like floral arrangement for my card. So you'll see me color my poppies very pale pink and peach. And in the end, they would almost look white. I started to work on my card by stamping the large floral arrangement from the Wild Poppies stamp set in Memento Tuxedo ink onto Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock using my Mini Misty stamping tool. Now, at first, I actually stamped this panel twice. So, at first, I double or even triple stamped this image. It's just a habit that I have. Whenever I'm using my Misty, I'm drawn to double or triple stamping my images to have that nice black outline. But when you color with Copic markers, especially if you color with the very light colors, and if you go to color your image right after you stamped it, you sometimes run the risk of the ink bleeding. So what I have found works best is to either stamp the image once, which I did do here. I re-stamped another panel and I just stamped it once. Or if you stamp it a couple of times, let your panel sit in, let the ink dry for a couple of minutes before you go and color your image. This will allow the ink enough time to dry and you won't have any bleeding happening on the finished card. So I wanted my poppies to look almost white. Whenever you have the color white, of course, there are some shadows to the white areas. It's not all one color. It's not just white. You have a little bit of shading. I always love to shade white with a different color. So you can shade white with gray, but you can also use light colors, uh, light shades of other colors to add shading to your white color. And here I decided I'm going to use light pinks and light peach colors to add the shading to my white petals. First, I'm using the RV00. It's the lightest pale pink marker in my stash, and I'm adding just a little bit of shading under each of the petals. Now, I also changed the way how I applied the color. As my coloring progressed, I changed the way I applied the color. Here at first, you can see me just adding basically a line of color outlining the base of the petal. Later, I decided it looked a lot better if you flicked the color in, creating visible vines on the petals. I also used the RV10 as a slightly darker pink to add a little bit darker pink colors to the petals. Another marker that I used quite a lot to color these images was the Colorless Blender. I used it to soften some of the harsh areas and blend the colors into white. To color the flower peach, I used E00 marker. Again, I'm using it to outline the base of the petals, just following the folds and the curves of the petals on the steamed images. And then I'm using E02 marker to add just a little bit of that darker color onto the petals. Now, at this point, I actually re-stamped my panel because I noticed that the ink had started to bleed. So here I have the image just stamped once. Now, I did keep the stamp in my Misty. So once I was done coloring this, I popped the panel back into my Misty and I re-stamped the black outline. So the finished image, once everything is done coloring and all that, the finished image does have a nice black outline to it. So right now it might look a little bit pale, but once the coloring is done, I re stamp the black outline and it looks a lot darker. So at this point, I decided I did not like that line type coloring. I decided I wanted to do the flick style coloring method to make the petals look a little bit more realistic. Because if you really look at a flower petal, you don't, have, you don't see lines of color on it. You 
you see veins with different colors and you can create those veins by using a flick style coloring method. So I'm adding flicks from the base of the petals, but now I'm also adding a couple of flicks from the tip of the petal, from the top of the petal to create visual folds and add a little bit more interest to each of the petals. Now I'm not a pro when it comes to Copa coloring. There's still so much to learn for me, but I do try and color the flowers the best I can. And I quite like this flick style coloring method to achieve the almost white like flowers for this image. So I kept on coloring and I colored the rest of the florals either pink or peach. And I ended up having two peach flowers in four pink flowers for this floral cluster. To color the flower centers, I used my gray markers. I started with a C5, then used C7, a slightly darker, and also a C9 marker to add a little bit of the darker gray. I never want to use my black marker for this. You might think that this is a natural choice, but black would be too stark black and compared to the other colors. So I prefer to use the gray markers instead. Now to color the leaves, I used just a handful of markers. I started with a G21. I quite like this muted green color. I then added the YG63 to add a little bit of shading to the poppy leaves. Now I also used the YG63 as the base color for the other type leaves. So I basically used the same colors for all of the leaves, but I made some of the leaves darker and some lighter. Now my coloring wasn't perfect, the leaf coloring wasn't perfect. I intentionally left some white spots on these other shape leaves because I wanted to have a white highlight and I didn't want to use my white pen. So instead of coloring the entire space of the leaf, I left a little bit of the white and that created a natural highlight. I also used G94 and even G99 marker to add the shading to the leaves on this image. So here's a look at the finished panel, the finished coloring. I love the way it turned out. It's very soft, it's very pale. And I don't know, this just speaks spring to me. Now I want to add a sentiment to this card. The Wild Poppies stamp set includes a beautiful banner and you have three sentiment options. You have Hello Beautiful, Missing You, and Thinking of You. And all of these are designed to go inside of that banner. I wanted to stamp the banner, color it, cut it out, and pop it over top my flowers. So here, once again, I'm using my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I'm stamping the banner image, and I'm going to color it using my Copic markers. Now, I wasn't sure which colors I wanted to use. I wasn't sure which colors would look nice with the poppies, with that floral arrangement. So I kind of experimented a little bit and at first I used my pinks, the exact same colors I used to color the pink poppies. But once I had cut that banner out and laid it across the floral arrangement, I didn't like it. So I later re-stamped the banner and recolored it using the W1, W3 and W5 gray markers and that worked a lot better for my card. Now to create a card base, I wanted this card to be slimline. We're actually mini slimline. I'm really into this size lately. I still love my A2 card sizes, but I find the mini slimline card to be so, I don't know, intriguing. So whenever I can, I try and make a mini slimline card. I started by trimming a panel off this beautiful pale pink cardstock, or actually this is pattern paper from my stash. I trimmed it to three by six inches. This is going to make the front of my card. Next, to create the card base, I took a sheet of letter card stock. This is Nina Solar White, 110 pound, and I scored it at three and a quarter inches. I used my mini scoring board and I went ahead and squared it all the way across. You can see that my scoring board is actually not large enough to accommodate that sheet, so I just went ahead and moved the sheet while I was scoring it. Having added that score line, I folded and creased it with my scoring tool. And then I used my trimmer and I trimmed this card base to three and a quarter by six and a quarter inches. And this gave me the mini slimline card size that would fit into the mini slimline envelope, which measures three and a half by six and a half inches. 
Next, I foam mounted the pink panel onto the card base. I always like to add dimension to my cards. And I also used foam adhesive squares to foam mount the floral arrangement. Now I felt like this card needed a little bit of something, so I pulled some white thread from my stash and I decided I wanted to tie a little bow at the bottom, making it look like the thread is holding the flowers together. Now I didn't want to, of course, tie the thread across the entire card, so I needed to punch a hole in the fold and that's what I used to thread the thread through the card base making sure that it only appeared on the front and didn't close the entire card. I wrapped it three times around my card and tied it into a pretty little bow. So here's a look at that sentiment. Like I mentioned, I used my light gray markers to color it. I cut it out with the help of a coordinating die. Whenever I have a banner like this, I like to add dimension to my banners. So I went ahead and I folded it a little bit, or maybe I should say creased it a little bit, or bent it a little bit at the ends, and then I created a little bit of a curve in the center. Now to help that curve pop, I added a foam square in the center of the banner, and then I used my glue pan at the ends of the banner to make sure that portion gets adhered flush onto the card. So I have a little bit of dimension created with the help of that foam square and then the ends of the banner are, are adhered flush onto the floral arrangement. Here's how this looks. You can see there's a little bit of dimension there, not too much, but the banner isn't adhered completely flat onto the card, making this arrangement and the card a little bit more interesting. Now finally, to finish my project, I decided I wanted to add a couple of jewels and I pulled some white jewels from my stash and I just heard a couple of them here and there, scattering them around in the background and also scattering them across some of the florals. I had a blast making this card and I hope you picked up a few tips and tricks in my video and will give this idea a go yourself. If you do, you know the drill, please share online and tag us on social media. We always love seeing what you guys are making. Subscribe now and hit that bell icon not to miss any new card making tutorials. Thanks for watching. Love you guys and I'll see you next time.